Good evening and welcome to Real Talk, our parenting lecture series sponsored by the Department of Family and Community Service. We are proud tonight to be talking about college readiness. Uh, my name is Peter Affinito. I'm the guidance director for the Patterson Public Schools, and I'm very flattered to be with the panel that we have this evening, and we'll start from my right. Frank from Rutgers, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Rutgers, please. So again, uh, I'm Frank Rifo. I'm a missions counselor down from Rutgers University in New Brunswick. Um, I am the, uh, I guess, the recruiter for um, Patterson as well. Amongst my many responsibilities at the university includes multicultural recruitment to the university and EOF recruitment, which is a recruitment of our first generation college students to Rutgers University in New Brunswick. I am also a proud Rutgers alum. I graduated back in 2010 with a degree in biology. Um, a little bit about Rutgers University. We're the eighth oldest institution of higher ed in North America. We actually just celebrated our 250th birthday. We were founded back in 1766. Uh, we are part of the AAU, which is the Association of American Universities. There are roughly around 4,100 universities in North America. Only 62 are part of the AAU, and there are only two in the state of New Jersey, one being Rutgers and the other one being Princeton University. We are also the birthplace of college football, the first intercollegiate college football game was played at Rutgers University where we beat Princeton our very first game as well. We have over 100 majors available to students across seven first-year schools. We have the School of Arts and Sciences, the School of Engineering, the School of Business, uh, the School of Environmental Biological Sciences, Mason Grove School of Fine Arts, our Ernst Mario School of Pharmacy, as well as um, the Rutgers School of Nursing available to students as well. Okay, thank you, Frank. Blair? Hi, I'm Blair Seidler. Um, I am actually in my day job a math teacher here at the School of Education and Training. I am also an alumnus of Columbia University. I graduated a long time before 2010. Um, I am also a member of Columbia's Alumni Representative Committee. So one of the things that I do is I get to talk with the guidance department and I interview prospective freshmen. Um, I do not interview from Patterson because I think that's a conflict of interest. I do most of my interviewing with candidates from Bergen County, but in this role, I kind of know what the admission staff is looking for, and that's you know my purpose in being here tonight. Um, Columbia University is 12 years older than Rutgers, um, founded in 1754 as King's College in Lower Manhattan. It's been in its current home in Morningside Heights, also in Manhattan, since about 1890. And Columbia has 25,000 students, give or take, across um, its graduate and undergraduate divisions. There are four undergraduate schools at Columbia. Um, Columbia College is the main liberal arts institution. Columbia Engineering, of which I am an alumnus, is the engineering school. Um, Barnard College is the women's college affiliated with the university. And the School of General Studies is really intended for um, students who are working full time, supporting themselves, and usually older students. So typically, students from here would be applying to Columbia College Engineering or um, Barnard. Okay, thank you very much, Blair. And finally, Gilman. How are you? My name is Gilman Chaudhry. Uh, currently, I work for the Department of Family Community Engagement inside Patterson Public Schools. My title is Community Outreach and Special Projects Coordinator. Uh, what I do in my position is that we do a plethora of different services, not only for our parents, but for our students as well. On our parent portion, we help support PTOs, action teams. We also provide social services in the terms of medical service fairs to get parents health insurance. We also help educate parents on the variety of advocacy. Uh, such as fair funding, uh, learning about their role in the schools, and also helping parents understand the importance of preparing every child to be ready for their college and chosen career. Uh, currently, we also support a program in the school district, which is called the College Ready Mentorship Families Program. And in this program, we provide uh, we help provide SAT classes, college trips. We also help with common applications. We pinpoint the students to kind of make them a little more, uh, not only aggressive, but a little more worthy of entering some of the top select uh, universities in the country. And we work very closely with the guidance department to ensure that we're giving the students as much support as possible, along with their parents, uh, to be successful. Okay, Gilman, thank you. <clears throat> Right before we get started, our uh, format for the evening is I will present questions to our panel. 
they will answer the questions. We're gonna to try to keep it to one or two answers. However, if everybody on the panel wants to give an answer, absolutely positively. Uh, we'd like the audience to, if you have a question, please jot it down. I think index cards were passed out. Feel free to jot it down. About the last 10 to 15 minutes, we will have questions and answers. Please be respectful. If you're not happy with an answer, not sure about an answer, that's when we're gonna to go to the end. Okay, um, first question, right off the top. What type of students are we looking for? Well, at Rutgers, we're looking for a well-rounded student. So it's not just, uh, when we're making our admissions decision, it's not just a function of um, standardized test scores. That's just a component of our decision. So we look at things such as your standardized test scores, but we also most importantly look at the classes you took in high school and how well you did in them. All right. Then also on top of that, we also look at your extracurriculars, we look at your application and the essay that you filled out as well. At Rutgers, we're not um, looking for uh, letters of recommendation. We actually don't require them in our application process. So there's so many points in our application that we're getting to know who you are as an applicant. So amongst a well-rounded student, we're also looking for a student who's gonna contribute to the diversity of the university, all right? Because Rutgers is a diverse um, university. As well as we're looking for a student who could handle the academic rigor of Rutgers University. I think I spoke about that when I said um, in terms of the classes we're looking for that you have completed during your time at high school. Okay, Frank, where? Yeah, um, Columbia has you know many of the same interests. I think that um, two years ago, I know the numbers, we had 36,000 applications for 1,700 spots in the entering freshman class. So, you know, a lot of these students have very good test scores and very good grades. And the Columbia Admissions Office is looking at the entire student. What things do you enjoy? What, you know, what extracurricular activities are you part of? How do you give back to your community? When you come to Columbia, you know, how is it going to change you? And how are you going to make Columbia a better place with your presence? You know, that comes out through an interview. That comes out through your essay questions. Um, there, there are a lot of ways that you know Columbia can try to do that. And again, you have to be able to deal with a very heavy academic course load. So grades are critically important. Test scores slightly less so um, on the theory that what you did in four years of high school is a better indicator of what kind of student you are than test scores. I mean, yes, you should have strong test scores, but that's not the be all and end all. Okay, Gilman? No. Okay, um, <clears throat> along with that, what type of student are we looking for? In the guidance department, we have a lot of times the student that we are trying to take that extra math class or that extra science class, and they rebuttal it saying, I don't need it, I don't want it, I don't have to take it. Isn't that an important qualification to go a little bit above and beyond? Isn't that something that our colleges are also looking for? Yeah, I mean, I know one thing we see a lot is a lot of students who maybe are interested in engineering or pharmacy or any of the sciences, um, senior year, they take off of math, right? Um, it only benefits you to take math during your senior year because you do have to take a placement exam uh, before enrolling at the university. So it's better to have all those courses under your belt, so therefore you do better on that placement exam, and therefore you're placing in a higher level math. And of course, certain programs at the university do require you to take that senior level math course, and it actually is highly recommended, um, such as I mentioned the School of Engineering, even the Rutgers Business School, it would be in your uh, best interest as well to take the higher level math course during your senior year. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Working with the college application, what are some of the mistakes that are that you see that our students are making? Deadlines. Um, a lot of students do not adhere to the deadlines, um, such as you know the regular action deadline may be December first. We have students who you know to some strange reason, do not apply by December 1st, apply after December 1st. Keep in mind that I know at Rutgers, um, you're only gonna be eligible for any of our merit-based scholarships if you apply by December 1st. So, you know, you could be the valedictorian of your high school, perfect scores and your standardized test scores, but if you applied after December 1st, you wouldn't be in the running for any scholarships at the university. So deadlines is one thing that I definitely see repeatedly that students do not adhere to. Um, the other smaller things, such as um, you know, not proofreading your essay, student telling us how you know 
I really, really want to come to Rutgers, but Rutgers is spelled P-E-N-N-S-T-A-T-E, you know, things of that nature. Um, so take your time, proofread, and also, like I said, deadlines is probably the biggest thing. Okay. <clears throat> So um, again, I have I have a different role. I'm not an admissions officer, so I don't see the paperwork necessarily. Um, but as an interviewer, I have had students who walked into an interview and told me that they did not like New York City, which is particularly unfortunate when you consider that the official name of Columbia University is Columbia University in the city of New York. Um, the reason that that name is the way it is is because Columbia feels that being a part of New York City and being part of that life that the city has is very important to its identity as a university. So if you could walk into an interview and you say, oh, I really want to go to Penn State, but you're talking to somebody from Rutgers, or I hate New York, but you're talking to somebody from Columbia, that can be a problem. I will say for those of you who have interviews coming up, that you want to make sure you've done some research. If you apply, I mean, I, I had one other interview I did one year, a student had applied early decision, binding early decision to Columbia, and what he knew about Columbia was that it was a good school and it was somewhere in New York State. <laughs> that was the extent of the research he had done. Um, please do your homework when you are writing essays, when you are preparing for interviews, make sure that you are really talking about the school that you think you're supposed to be talking about. Okay, thank you. Um, some, of the, some of the problems and some of the concerns that the parents uh, a lot of times don't realize and don't think about along with our students are all of a sudden we want to go away to school but we've never been away before. Uh, we don't like to stay by grandma's house but we're gonna go to uh, North Carolina. Um, what's some of the things that we can do to prepare our students for the possibility that it's going to be a major change? You're going to have to start to do laundry. You're going to have to wake yourself up on time. You know, you're going to have to make sure you get to the cafeteria to get your meals. What's some of the tips that we can give to the parents and to the students? Um, hey, this actually fits into another one of my jobs. Um, one of the things that I do in the summer is I actually teach for Johns Hopkins um, CTY summer programs. These are students as young as fifth grade, some of them, who move into a college dorm for three weeks. And they get to do their own laundry and they get to take care of themselves. Yes, they're supervised all the time. If you can, and there are scholarships available for a lot of these programs. If you, as a parent, can do a little bit of homework and find an opportunity for your student to go away for a week, three weeks, some summer program, it probably makes moving into a dorm room much less daunting. And one of the reasons this is important is because we do have a lot of students who start their freshman year at college, they're away from home for the first time. So in addition to trying to adjust to a difficult, challenging academic environment, they're also homesick. Homesick is probably gonna happen anyway, but if you can be more prepared for it, that factor can be lessened. Okay. Um, econ ec um, economic problems are always a big concern. Uh, how much money is it going to cost? I don't have any money. Uh, we have single parents, all these types of issues. What are some of the things that we should prepare our students for if they are so worried about a financial package? Keeping, keeping in mind as well that the city of Patterson itself is uh, heavily socially and economically disadvantaged. Uh, there are about 77% of parents that are living below the poverty line. So this, this answer would be greatly appreciated for our parents here. So the first thing I would say is definitely, I, I understand that fear is there. You know, when you look at the prices of colleges and universities nowadays, it seems a little bit daunting. But rest assured that there are ways around that. So starting off first with the application process. Um, I know at the university we have a $70 application fee. Um, it can be waived depending on how you answer specific questions on the application, such as, you know, or do you qualify for a free or reduced lunch? That would waive your application fee. Or even if you send in your guidance counselor a letter to us to just say, this student qualifies for a fee waiver. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Financial aid, um, about 79% of our students receive financial aid at the university with the average package being around $16,000. So the key with financial aid is that it is based on the FAFSA, which is something that you would need to fill out. Um, the FAFSA deadline 
this year was December 1st uh, to the university. So when you fill out the FAFSA, it will input a number out, and that number would pretty much help the financial aid office make a financial aid package for you. There's also unique programs at the university. I mentioned earlier the Education Opportunity Fund Program, which is for first-generation college students. All right, so with the EOF, there's an academic component, and there's also a financial component. So if you're within the poverty guidelines, typically in the state of New Jersey, you do get a decent amount of financial aid, whether that be a com combination of the tuition aid grant and other grants, such as the EOF grant as well. So keep that in mind. And the EOF grant for students who are admitted through that program, they do do a mandatory summer program, which helps, helps you get acclimated to your surroundings and also the college atmosphere. All right, so keep that in mind that yes, the numbers may seem daunting, but there are ways around it with financial aid and numerous programs at the university. Yeah, the, uh, the numbers at Columbia are certainly daunting. Um, I have a daughter who is a junior there this year, and Columbia, I believe this year is $72,000 including room and board, which is, is a terrifying number that most people can't get near. Um, everybody understands that financial aid is a big deal. And Columbia University has, you know, really has Patterson in mind in a lot of ways. Um, first of all, Columbia's admissions are need blind, which means that when you submit all of your application paperwork and all of your financial aid paperwork, they go to two different offices. Um, the admissions decisions do not get based on whether or not you can afford to pay the tuition. And again, you have to fill out your FAFSA. You have to make sure that all of your paperwork isn't on time. That is very important stuff. Once that has happened, however, um, the university will meet all of their students' needs. Um, Columbia has a few other policies that are very important for our population. First of all, families that make under $65,000 a year do not pay anything at Columbia. If you can get in, you go for free. Um, I, we have one student from a couple of years ago, Frank Castro, who is enjoying that right now. Um, Columbia also just introduced a new policy where undocumented um, residents of the United States are now also eligible for need-blind admissions. Um, that is new for this year's admission cycle. So that is something that I think is very important because I know that that's a concern for many people. Um, but we, Columbia now has need blind admissions for every citizen, permanent resident, or undocumented resident of the United States. And they also tend to meet your financial obligation, help you meet your financial obligations without loans. Um, which I know is another thing. A lot of people graduate from university with you know $100,000 in debt, and they're like, how am I ever going to pay this back? Um, some, some of the top schools, including Columbia, very much believe that that's not the way it should be. So I think that w the advice that I give a lot of my seniors here is please just apply to the schools that you really want to go to and give them a chance to give you a financial aid package that works for your family. I mean, I know that the numbers are scary, but nobody pays retail. So please keep that in mind, and please apply to the schools that you want to go to. Give them a chance to meet your need. Thank you, Blair. <laughs> Thank you, Blair. Al along the same lines, it's, it's to put parents a little bit at, at ease, uh, you can start checking your child's web uh, high school website. Every school, all of our schools have a financial aid night. We have also partnership with State County Community College and William Patterson University that you do not have to be in attendance there. You don't even have to apply there. They will work with you to do your financial aid package. We also have a partnership with the United Way, which is located downtown Patterson at Center City, Center City Mall. You could go down there, just bring your paperwork. Um, we will do everything in our power to assist you, to get you through the process. Some of you have started working on your financial aid packages. You'll see it is a lengthy process. It is all computerized. Um, however, even though it is a lengthy process, it's all about you. It's all about your family. It's not like a test where you're, oh my God, what is the answer to this question? It's questions about you that you will be able to answer. So we will do everything in our power to assist you. And as our panel has said, please do not, not apply to a school because you're worried about financial aid. Okay. Thank you. And we will go on. Um, we have children in kindergarten. What could our parents do starting in kindergarten to prepare our children for college? 
there are numerous summer programs out there I think that we mentioned earlier as well that would expose um, your students to the college atmosphere um, and also the learning process as well. I know specifically uh, we have a pre-college program um, on our website at Rutgers where based on a program a student is interested in, you can apply to that and do a summer program with that, whether it's engineering, whether it's in the arts, um, all of that is available as well. So I think it is important to expose students earlier just so they get you know a little bit excited about something that's coming ahead especially with college as well so I believe there's numerous summer programs you can get involved in with that okay I mean uh, I, I think that from you know my experience both here and at Columbia I think that if students who are in grammar school always have a book with them that they just have a better chance than students who don't always have a book with them. If I, when I look at the students in this building who are getting into the good schools, they are always reading 100% of the time. So if you have a student who is bored, if you have a student who is smart, and that student is sitting in front of video games or watching TV, do what you know, parents have been doing for generations, kick them out the door with a book and say, go read this under a tree somewhere. That is probably, for me, the number one thing that you can do to make a difference for your child. Absolutely. I would like to add a little bit on that as well. Uh, many of us, especially living in the city of Patterson, we find that the opportunities to do such things are very difficult. Uh, you know, there's multiple studies done about how art programs, music programs are very important to the development of children. Uh, you know, sometimes because of the daily uh, business of living, it's been very difficult for parents in the city to try to allocate time for children to do academic sports, uh, I'm sorry, academic sports enrichments. But they are out there. From our department on itself, we've been able to locate uh, a plethora of different services that the city offers from anything from academic sports to, uh, to just nature clubs and whatnot and we truly do believe as well that it's important that if for children to be competitive compared to their peers throughout the state that they need to engage in these programs and as a parent you know as parents that are out there I know that there's no parent here in this room especially watching on the Facebook live feed that will say how what can we do to not help our children everyone's there I'm pretty sure trying to figure out the best possible chance for their children and uh, as uh, director Afanita stated too, the guidance department the school district in itself is the vehicle that we can help uh, children get to that point, but you as the parents are part of that driver. You're the passengers, the drivers of that bus. And without the parents actually supporting the children's education by asking questions, coming to events, you know, it's a tougher road to get your children to that point. And uh, I've seen it. I've seen fantastic parents that take their children to events, to art shows. I've seen parents take them, like, we're going to go to a lecture on this event and whatnot, and to expose them. And the more children are exposed, we find that it's an easier bet for the children to decide exactly exactly what they want to be when they grow up. So as parents, it's a tough job, but again, as uh, Mr. Seidler and uh, Mr. Frank here has stated, there are opportunities, uh, even if it's something as basic as just reading a book. And it's important for parents to take advantage of that. Okay, thank you, Blair. Also, uh, keep in mind, especially in the Sunday paper, the weekend editions of the papers, you'll constantly see advertisements for uh, open houses, they're called open houses at the colleges. If you just go to our local colleges, Montclair, William Patterson, Ramapo, Seton Hall, uh, you can go up. It says open house. That's the reason why it says open house. And you can go to the campus. It's a beautiful day. They're usually held on the weekends. Uh, most of them are held on Sundays, so the traffic isn't as crazy driving through the, through the highways, et cetera. Um, and you can walk around the campus, check things out. There are tour guides. And the biggest thing that we always tell everybody, don't be afraid to ask students questions. You're on that campus, you see a student, hey, what do you like about this school? What don't you like about this school? Um, feel free to walk in, to check out the cafeteria. Parents, we always want you to check out the cafeterias because sometimes we have students as a no one's laughing. We call it the freshman 15, 20, and now it's getting up to 30, 35, and that means how much weight we're going to gain because all our students are doing is eating McDonald's and pizza. I still have my freshman 15, just to let you know. <laughs> so the, these are the important things. So when, we, when it says an open house, feel free to go to these things. It's never too soon, and don't be afraid to ask questions. And anything you could think of, it's there on that campus. Ask. Check it out. Please. Okay, um, let's go to some success stories. Tell us about inner city kids that have, have had a success story. Yeah, so I, before I was, um, 
be before I was at admissions, I was at another program which uh, recruited underrepresented students who are interested in the STEM field. So we have a decent amount of students um, that have come from um, areas such as Patterson, Passaic, as well, Newark, who uh, came through Rutgers. Uh, a lot of them came through the EOF program as well. Um, they were some of those students were students who were worried about, hey, am I going to get into college? Am I going to do well in college? Those students, they did get into college. They did do very well in college. And a lot of those students, close friends of mine, actually have now graduated medical school and now are practicing physicians. So the sky is the limit great. with great. everything that these students do do. So just keep that in mind that you know they did have the support structure there, you know, with your parents as well, and also with at the school as well that they went through that program and um, now they're practicing physicians. Well, I'll leave that to you, actually. So, would you like me to talk about Frank? I want you to talk about Frank. Right. So, one of our, uh, I can say, and this is uh, from both of us, actually, uh, there's a young man named Frank Carlos Castro, who uh, is a sophomore now currently at Columbia University. And, you know, there's not enough words in the dictionary to describe this young man. Not only is he a fantastic human being who's compassionate and caring, but he has a certain determination that you can put him anywhere in Patterson. He, and for Frank, he came from a very, you know, very difficult neighborhood, uh, living in the first ward in Patterson. But the, the intelligence that this young man had, the maturity, the ability to understand concepts, uh, you know, there are children like that that are sur throughout Patterson. But what it really takes once in a while, I have to say, is that if they have key people in their lives, some for, like their parents, their teachers, such as Mr. Seiler, that's able to kind of shift them to the point to say, well, we're going to make sure that you're going to get to the point where you're going to be not only excelling uh, in this particular field, but you're going to excel in life. And Frank Carlos Castro was uh, a very active child from doing volunteering hours, was doing community service events, but also participating in college classes at the local community college, which again, I would highly recommend parents to have your kids do. Uh, he participated in making sure that he took really rigorous classes such as AP courses and honors courses here. And all that shaped him to who he wanted to be. But one of the biggest defining moments of Frank Carlos Castro that I can say is his ability to ask questions and ask for help. I have never seen him say, like, I understand this concept completely. I've always seen him, and Mr. Seiler here can say from experience as well, Frank constantly uh, coming to your classroom, asking questions. And Frank lived in my classroom after school. <laughs> Calculus yes. is hard sometimes. <laughs> but you know what? That's, that's the determination that won him the day. That's the determination that got him to Columbia University, that got him a full ride scholarship where he's studying for computer science. He's an example not only of the city, but he's an example of his parents, the teachers, the school district. And overall, there are many Frank Carlos Castros out there, and I can say that. There are, there are dozens upon dozens, if not hundreds, of Frank Carlos Castros out there. But it's our opportunity or our mission to try to weed them out, to try to get them to, the, to be the best point. And I know Mr. Seiler can go on a little more about uh, Frank, so I'll leave it to you. Well, I mean, Frank's just one story. I mean, uh, if I look at my calculus classes over the last few years, we have students at Stevens and NJIT. We probably have about 25 at Rutgers. Um, you know, I mean, Frank is, is an exceptional student, but we have we have a lot of those around here. The question is, are you willing to put in the work when your friends are goofing around in class? Are you willing to ignore them and pay attention to what's going on and what's important? Because honestly, goofing around in class and having fun with your friends is more fun than doing work. But that's not what you're going to have in five years or 10 years. What you're going to have in five years or 10 years is hopefully a college degree and a career that makes you happy and a life that you're proud of. And that requires a little bit of sacrifice and a little bit of hard work. And it's all OK. And the best thing that you can do for your friends is when they're goofing around, don't just ignore them. Say, listen, let's do this work. We can go to college together. That'll be fun. There you go. OK, let's, let's go in another route now. Um, SATs and grades. We have students that have very good grades and weak SAT scores. And we have some students that are the opposite. They have pretty good SAT scores and not such good grades. What's, what's the route that we want to go here? How do we want to do it? If I'm, I'm a good student, but I have weak SAT grades, what happens? 
Well, one thing I always uh, suggest to students is um, the SATs is not the end all be all, right? The SATs or the ACTs is definitely not the end all be all. But at the same time, each school gives out what your 50% admit profile looks like, right? You want to make sure that you don't necessarily need that number per se, because remember, with that profile, it means that there's a certain amount of students who fall above it, and there's a certain amount of students who fall below it. So don't necessarily feel like, well, that's the magic number each school says I need to get in. That's not the case, because as I mentioned earlier, we're looking at you holistically. So it's not just a function of your standardized test scores. But again, if you're looking at your standardized test scores and you are way below it, you might want to consider retaking it um, just so you could try a bit harder to get closer to that number. And keep in mind that with the standardized test scores, a lot of schools um, super score the SAT scores now, meaning that they take the highest score from each section and that is now your new composite score. Um, they don't, not all schools necessarily do that with the ACTs, but definitely with the SATs, they do that as well. Okay. And that, that's very consistent with what I hear from the Columbia admission staff. Um, the, I think the average SAT score of Columbia's entering class is usually somewhere in the mid 1400s on the two part SAT. Um, some students are as low as 1300. Um, again, the SAT score is not the only thing that's being looked at, um, but it's, it's the total package of what have you done for four years of high school. Um, I think that particularly when students are coming from an urban school, I think there's some tendency to look at SAT scores as confirming, yes, this is really a straight A student. Um, and and that's, that's really what they're looking for, just is this data point consistent with all the other data points? Because they're not just looking at numbers. I mean, if they were looking at numbers, we wouldn't need admissions officers, we could do it on computers. Um, really, I think admissions staffs look at the entire student. They want the whole package. SATs are one thing. Your GPA in high school is one thing. Um, but there's a lot of other stuff that goes into making a person a person, and I think that's really what's of interest to the admissions staff. So you're kind of looking at like the whole student? Is that? Yeah, I mean, it's like, who are you? You know, what interests you? What drives you? Um, you know, what things do you do in your spare time? I mean, these are important things that factor into who you are as a person. Who you are as a person is in some ways as important as who you are as a student. But uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that at the end of the day, grades are important. Um, I'm not saying that you know you, every university you apply to with maybe a 2.0, it's going to be good news coming for you. So keep that in mind. We do see trends where ninth grade might be a little bit shaky. Tenth grade students start picking up, picking it up. They really get on the gun uh, during junior year. And because keep in mind, when you apply to a college, we only get your grades up until the fall semester of your senior year. All right. So you know we see that upward trend all the time. So it is a good balance that you need to have between grades and standardized test scores. It says something to an admission staff if you have a really, really high standardized test score and really, really low GPA. All right. It says I'm a really good test taker, but I didn't apply myself in high school or had extenuating circumstances that prevented me from applying myself in high school. The same thing could be said if you really, really have a high um, GPA coming from high school, but you don't really have a high test score. It might say, I'm not a great test taker, a great standardized test score um, test taker. So again, like we mentioned earlier, that's why that standardized test is not the end all be all. And there are also programs that if you apply to university with that we are a little bit more flexible with our standardized test scores, such as I mentioned with the Education Opportunity Fund program. All right, because we know that students at Rutgers who are admitted through that program will be taking that mandatory summer program where you're getting college level credits. Uh, we're a little bit more flexible with our standardized test scores because we know you're going to get, a, in essence, call it a crash course in the college. Okay. Uh, from the guidance end, uh, through my many years of experience, what we have found, and Frank and Blair, I'm sure you're going to agree, and Gil, I know you've seen this too, uh, we've had more colleges that will accept students that have shown that they want to work versus if something has not been a reason in their life to not have good grades, mm -hmm. even if they do have decent test scores and they have not applied themselves, um, we, we have a problem and it'll even come to the point where when we do on sites or when we uh, have uh, the, the uh, counselors come in, the admissions people come in and they question the counselors, well how come you know Johnny or 
Joey, whatever, uh, how come his t t test scores are good but his grades aren't so good? And if we can't come up with a reason other than, well, he's lazy, that's the last thing that the school wants to hear is that he's lazy. Uh, we have more better chance, or we have a better chance of getting our students in with probably a CC plus, B minus average that are working away and they are demonstrating that they are showing that they have, that they are trying and that they want it than the student that has slacked off. Absolutely. Agree? Absolutely. Okay. Um, looking towards the entire uh, admissions picture, how many, uh, what, what, I shouldn't say how many, what is the percentage of inner city kids that are accepted to Rutgers? Ballpark. I wouldn't be able to ballpark it. Uh, it's a decent number, though, if I had to do. So it shouldn't be discouraged. What I'm trying to get across is that they should not. Have no, to be it, it shouldn't. You shouldn't let that discourage you at all from applying to the university. There are, again, Rutgers is a very diverse university with around 36,000 undergraduates on campus. Um, so these students are spread across the state of New Jersey as well as spread across the country as well, and also spread across the world. So don't let it stop you because you feel like. Oh, my chances aren't good because I'm coming from this school district or whatnot. By all means, do not let that uh, prevent you from applying to the university. And I'm going to say the same thing for Columbia. When I was there, um, now when my daughter is there, there are students from every state in the union and probably from 40 or 50 different countries. Um, you know, Columbia certainly prides itself on having a wonderful, diverse mix of people with varying viewpoints on everything. Um, we want people from different religions, different cultures, different languages. I mean, you can probably hear, you know, 50 different languages being spoken on Columbia's campus on a day just by walking around the campus. Um, that's, I definitely think that you should be encouraged to apply from here. That's, that's great to hear. That's what we want to hear, and that's what we expect our students to succeed to. Uh, let's talk a minute about uh, our junior college, Keck County College. Uh, we have student, a lot of our students just for whatever reason can't, can't, can't afford it or they haven't had the best grades, so they go through the uh, uh, community college route. Yeah. That's not a bad route at all um, because there's two ways you could go. So again, some students go straight to a four-year institution. Some students start at a junior college or the local community college. Keep in mind that there is a statewide uh, agreement called the Lampart Law where if you graduate with your associate's degree from any two-year institution in the state of New Jersey, um, a any public or private institution that participates will accept 60 credits. So you come in at a junior standing. So it is not frowned upon at all for you to go a two year route then apply to the four year. Uh, Rutgers also offers scholarships as well for students who graduate with the associate's degree and apply as a transfer student to the university. Um, it's called the Phi Theta Kappa Scholarship. Um, it ranges up towards uh, $7,500 a year available to students and we give around 50 of those out each year. Um, so keep that in mind that it is completely okay. Some students do elect to go to a two year route then apply to the university before getting the associate's degree. Um, it's up to you personally. I think if you're gonna go the two year route, it might benefit you to get your associate's degree just because of that statewide transfer agreement so that you come in um, as um, a junior standing. So keep that in mind. It's good to know that if, uh, if I was a student in Patterson that just graduated or about to graduate that I won't be penalized in any way should I decide because they had an economic choice or because of uh, issues at home that if I went to the community college, which is Passaic County Community College, I'll be as long as I, as you stated, should get the associate degree before I even head to getting the uh, going into Rutgers for my final bachelor's. That's excellent to hear. Yep. And again, you don't you don't have to get the associates as I mentioned. Um, typically, on average, we're looking for your your time at a community college to have complete around a 3.0 GPA. Um, most important thing, no Ds or Fs um, in your last 18 and 24 credits. So it's very, I always tell students, you know, when they tell me, oh, Frank, I didn't get into Rutgers. It's not a function of getting into Rutgers. It's almost a function of when. Um, and when the stars are lining up in terms of, you know, some students may not be ready straight out of high school. You know, you might need to take that time uh, a year, maybe at a local community college get your grades up, and then apply um, to any university that you want to. 
Uh, I'd also like to add uh, one of the other things that we face with a lot of our students. A lot of our students say, oh, I'm not going downtown. I don't want to go downtown. It's like I never left home. Uh, I'm embarrassed to do that. Uh, our county college, Passaic County Community College, has an excellent, and very, very nice uh, campus in Wanaku. Uh, it's not a long ride. So if, you're, if one of your concerns is that you don't want to be downtown, you're a little bit embarrassed, there's a campus in Wanaku offering everything. I was just recently there, beautiful campus. The same thing as being downtown, so you don't have to say, oh, I'm going downtown. Uh, there, there are other routes, and what we can't do, because this is our future, we can't make excuses. What we don't want, and in my field we see it a lot, the student that comes back five or six years later, oh, I think I want to go to college now. Well, what did you do the last five or six years? We had all these different crazy jobs when you could have done it right from the get-go. Um, what's, what's some other advice that we, that we can give our students about to, to uh, prepare, especially in our junior and senior year? What are, what are some things, other than courses, what are some other things that, that we can do to get prepared? One, I always encourage, if you can, visit um, some of these colleges that you're thinking about applying to um, because you might, uh, and the college might look really good on a brochure, but you might not be able to see yourself there physically, you know, and you don't know that until you visit, you know, like was mentioned earlier, go there, go to the dining hall, you know, have a meal there, you know, picture yourself at that college or that university campus before you go ahead and apply there, you know, so I always encourage students definitely go visit because at the end of the day, I remember when I was applying to colleges, I applied to colleges as far as Los Angeles. Uh, I was the typical New Jersey kid that uh, I want to go as far away as from mom and dad as possible. Uh, I grew up in a town that is about, well, from my parents' door to my dorm in college was about eight minutes if you caught every green light. So I had the mindset that, nope, I'm going to go as far away as possible. You know, I was able to go visit that school all the way across country. And then when I got there, I realized... I can't really see myself here, you know. I really like four um, seasons to come around. And because Rutgers was so close, never visited Rutgers until two days before the May 1st deadline. My dad came to my room and said, um, you might want to make a decision. Let's go see Rutgers tomorrow. I'm like, oh, okay, let's do that. Went to go see Rutgers, and again, because it was in my uh, back door, I pretty much figured, yeah, I'll just come see it, and I fell in love with it right away. And again, I would have never known that should I not have visited it. You know, I may have ended up at a school and then ended up transferring again. You know, so keep that in mind. So I definitely encourage you to visit the schools to see yourself there. I guess you wouldn't suggest people going, <laughs> deciding to go to Rutgers the day before the deadline, would you? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say this. Well, I was actually going to say, I mean, I knew I liked Frank for a reason. Um, <laughs> when I applied to colleges, I visited every college that I applied to except Columbia. And I got into most of them, including Columbia, and I was about to say, okay, I'm going to the University of Pennsylvania. And my parents laid a guilt trip on me. They said, you know that we both graduated from Columbia you're going to visit it before you turn them down. We are going to take you to Dean's Day, and you're going to visit the school, and we're going to take you to lunch at our favorite Chinese restaurant, and then if you turn them down, it's fine. So about a week before the deadline, I'm on Columbia's campus, and I set foot on campus. I walked down College Walk, and I said, oh my goodness, I'm home. This is where I have to go. And, and that's one of the reasons why you have to visit college campuses, because if I, mean, I went to Yale, and Yale is beautiful, and I could absolutely not see myself going there. I didn't apply because it was beautiful, but I it didn't feel right, um, you know. And I went to Penn, and I went to Princeton, and they were okay. And I went to Columbia, and it was like, yes, this is the place I must be. And you could have that moment, but you're not going to know unless you go around and visit places. So that's a big one, absolutely. That, that's probably one of the biggest factors and one of the biggest things that we try to impress on our students and our parents. Please visit the schools. Please go there and see them. Make sure, as everyone is saying, that you feel comfortable. And you will be able to step on a campus and say, wow, this is where I want to be. And I know that somebody out there is saying, well, what if there's two places that I feel that I really want to be? Well, that becomes the toughie. And then we take all the other things into consideration. Where are you going to get the best financial 
book deal, what really has the best courses for you, so on and so forth. I have to, to add on to, like it seemed Mr. Seidler said a really important point about how your parents played the guilt trip on you basically. Mm -hmm. But uh, from what, I, what I've seen and from what I, I can say as well that parents seem to have a really good opportunity to explain to their children exactly what kind of universities they should go to, what programs they should focus on. So every level from kindergarten all the way to high school, it seems like there's parents are part of the solution to determine if their children are going to be successful. So if it wasn't for your mom and dad saying that, hey, I want you to go to Columbia because that's our school and whatnot, um, you know, I'm they, pretty. They, they didn't tell me I had to go there. They just told me I had to visit. <laughs> but the uh, the Chinese food and everything that they gave you to uh, sweeten the deal. I'm pretty sure parents in the audience, you haven't done anything to to try to convince your children about anything, have you? <laughs> okay. If we could wrap up a little bit now, what's something that we would like to leave our audience with? We'll start with Frank. During the whole college uh, application process and college search process, I encourage you to have fun. Um, you will apply to college, well, hopefully you'll be applying to college only once, you know, so you only live junior year, senior year only once. Um, so have fun throughout the process. I always encourage, I'm sure your guidance counselors have been working with you or will work with you, um, have a list of schools that you're definitely thinking about going to and thinking about visiting. Um, and also just remember that Again, standardized test scores are not the end all be all. I can't stress that enough. Don't be afraid to apply to a college or a university like we mentioned because of a price tag. Um, I, I think it was mentioned earlier as well that had the university or college give an opportunity to, um, in essence, present you a financial aid package, you know, you might not like it, um, but, or you might be in a situation where you say, wow, I didn't think this financial aid package would be so good. And then you might end up going to that school as well. So keep that all in mind. Thank you, Frank Blair. Yeah, I would, uh, you know, definitely say, make sure that if you're thinking about college, and I don't care if you're in seventh grade or twelfth grade, if you are at the point in your life where you're thinking about college, work hard, have a good time working hard, enjoy learning things because that's what college is about. If you don't enjoy learning things, then you're not going to have a happy experience at a strong college. If you do enjoy learning things, this is definitely what you want to do. Have a good time with it. Thank you. Well, what I would say is, uh, from our experiences working at the school district, what we have found is that as long as the parents are there, part of the equation to ensure that the children are successful, as long as the parents are giving the opportunity for the children not only to make mistakes, because through fa even failure is a lesson, that's what I believe in, that every opportunity that you give your kids in a, to be successful, if they make a mistake, it's important for them to learn from it. And especially when they go to college where you know, they might flunk a test, they might have miss, maybe do an all night study session the day before the test. But if they learn the strategies now, by making mistakes in grade school, high school, by learning about what, what a positive strategy is. When they go into college by themselves where they're not gonna have mom and dad to do the laundry or mom and dad to wake them up or mom and dad to say, did you do your homework? They're gonna know internally, even my mom and dad are not here, but I hear them in the back of my head saying, I better make sure I do my homework. I better study a week before. So that's why it's, it's very important not only to have a positive relationship with your parents, but you parents have to make sure, take the extra hand in ensuring that your kids have what it takes to survive college by themselves, because they're going to be a reflection of you. So you want to make sure that they're successful. And if I could just add, please take advantage of your teachers, your guidance counselors, your coaches, your administrators. We are all here for you. We're all here to work the process. We, we will do everything that we can. We, as I said, we have partnerships with colleges, with United Way. We're going to do everything in our power to make everything go as smoothly and as easy as you can. And we got a couple minutes that we can do some questions. All right, anyone that have a couple questions? We have a few minutes. See cards. Oh, looks like a lot of cards actually. <laughs> Here we go. Hey. Put the glasses on for this. <laughs> How important is the admission interview? Good question. How important is the admissions interview? Um, so it'll be easy for me, because Rutgers, we don't do interviews. 
at um, the only schools that would do an interview for you at Rutgers is if, let's say, you applied through the Education Opportunity Fund Program. Um, some specialized schools uh, within, such as the School of Pharmacy, would invite you in for an interview. But um, generally, we do not do interviews at Rutgers. And I will tell you that at Columbia, an interview is a tiebreaker. Um, if you are right on the borderline of whether or not you're going to be accepted, a really good report from an interview could tip the scales in your favor. And if you're right on that borderline, a really bad interview could tip them against. It's, it's not the most critical part of the process by any stretch. So should my parent come with me to the interview? <laughs> Your parents should drop you off and wave and should not even set foot in whatever place you're meeting. <laughs> so I guess parents, I, I, it's important that you hear this. Do not come with them inside the interview process or buy the admission officer lunch or any of those items. It's very important. I well, guess just leave them at the door, correct? Yes, leave them at the door, wave. Um, you can say hello to the interviewer who will say, please come back in 45 minutes. And, and that's as much as you're ever going to hear. Okay, I'm a middle class family. Do I have a chance to get financial aid? Yes, um, because keep in mind that there's the financial aid uh, package takes into, you know, a tax return pretty much 1040 but if there's anything that the initial financial aid package is offered to you by the office of financial aid you can in essence contact them and say listen this number isn't really realistic um, on paper it may seem like I'm making this much but realistically you know what's coming in and out as well so they you know like we said earlier nobody pays sticker um, so it's just a function of um, contacting the office if you, the preliminary package isn't good enough and asking them to retake a look at it. Yeah, putting on my parent hat for a moment, I have a child at Columbia. We are a middle class family. My wife is also a teacher. We get a lot of financial aid and we could not afford to send her without it. Okay, that's good to hear. So for the parents that are worried, here it is. Okay, I'm going to be a senior next year. What's the best time for me to apply to college? The fall semester of your senior year. Um, um, our early action deadline is um, November 1st, and um, our regular action deadline is um, December 1st. So you want to have your application in by the fall of your senior year. The application opens as early as September. And again, remember what I said earlier, mistakes I see a lot of students who do not mind their deadlines. So keep in mind um, those two important dates. Yes, I remind all of my seniors about your application deadline every year. Right, Ariana? Um, our uh, Columbia's early application deadline is November 1st. Columbia's regular admission, I believe, is January 1st almost every year. Um, I don't think it moves. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's a fall of your senior year thing. And now I'm going to put on my teacher hat for a moment. If you are applying to schools that require um, letters of recommendation, and many do, one of the things that you should do early in your senior year is decide which teachers are writing you recommendations. Ask them as early in the year as possible whether they are willing to write for you, and make sure that you work with your guidance counselor to add those teachers to your account so that everything gets taken care of in a timely manner. We don't want to keep the nice admission staff waiting. So if I was a parent, would, for, would a good strategy for me be to have the deadlines for FAFSA this on the refrigerator so I can keep track for the child? FAFSA, you're almost certainly going to need parent help, so yes. Um, you know, I, I believe that the students, when they're seniors, should be able to track their own deadlines, but maybe the students should put them on the fridge so that the parents can remind them occasionally. That might be a good strategy. And, and so that everyone knows it's, it's an easy process to keep track of everything because everything is online now. You can pick up, you can go to any, even if you're not the, the least computer literate person, you could sit there, you could type in Seton Hall, Montclair State, and it'll pop up. It'll give you the admissions time, the deadlines, when financial aid is due, when everything is due. So it's not a difficult process. And of course, in your guidance departments, there's signs, there's posters all over the place. So there should be no, no concern about not being able to find out when the deadlines are. Okay, and our last question is, and I love this question, how important is freshman year grades in high school? <laughs> yeah, uh, 
it's all part of the whole package. Um, so yes, if freshman year wasn't great, that's okay. Again, we're looking for you to come into Rutgers on an upward climb uh, as opposed to doing a nosedive. So freshman year, you didn't do too hot. So, uh, sophomore year, as I mentioned, you picked it up. Junior year, you really kicked it into gear. And uh, fall semester, your senior year, as well as the rest of your senior year, you're doing really, really well. It definitely looks good on the application. All right, just keep that in mind, though, seniors during senior year. I know it happens all the time where just like um, you go get your flu shots, I always encourage seniors to get your senioritis shots. That seniors, after they've been admitted, they go on cruise control in the spring semester of senior year. And again, cruise control is fine, but again, you want to make sure you're going to cruise control here and not like this, all right, because each most universities don't get your final um, high school transcripts until late in the summer so we're looking at early July and you know by then mom and dad have thrown you a cookout you have bought your hoodie your t-shirts and everyone knows where you're going and then the school's on the phone with you asking you if you fell asleep all the spring semester and it does happen each year that and it's not just us other universities across the country will rescind your offer of admission all right so again keep in mind that during senior year you still want to make sure you're doing well even after you've gotten in you know, um, from the uh, from the Columbia perspective, um, and I'm really going to address this to all the ninth graders and below out there. Um, yes, your freshman year grades are important because if you're applying to Columbia, you have a six percent chance of being admitted before we start looking at anything because that's just what the numbers say. So if your freshman year grades are terrible you are probably not going to get in. And I'm not saying that to be mean, I'm saying that because that is the reality of the situation. Um, so if you are an eighth grader and you are viewing this, please be ready to work really hard starting next September if you want to go to Columbia. So I can't take it easy my freshman year? Um, no, yeah. there are four years in high school and you kind of get to work for all four of them. That's so parents, remember, <laughs> can't take it easy in high school and freshman year. You need to start immediately right after eighth grade, as you said and especially for the eighth graders and freshmen that are out there. By you saying that my freshman year isn't important, you're saying that whatever classes you're taking as a freshman are not important. Every class that you take is important. Everything is a sequence. You can't take it to have geometry or algebra two without taking algebra one. You don't get to English two without English one. So everything is important. <clears throat> Okay, on behalf of the Department of Family and Community Engagement, we'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight. We'd like again to thank our panel, Frank, Blair, and Gilman. And to conclude our night for Real Talk, College Readiness. Thank you, and thank you for being with us.